One popular analogy and favorite is to explain liquidity like a rubber band. Think about liquidity as price grabbing liquidity, like pulling down the band, giving you the spring to push price in the direction you intended. That is exactly how I use to explain liquidity in one of my popular reels that I made to understand the concept that price goes down, grabs liquidity to give you the juice to go in the direction you intended, right? Otherwise, we could just simply get stuck in a range and there's not enough power to continue price. So I wanna go into depth about that because liquidity is a good part of my strategy and an important part that has allowed me to achieve that 75% win rate that you see on live stream because price needs to grab juice from somewhere. So I want to explain how liquidity is done. People see liquidity as stop loss hunts or different type of methods, but I want to clear this up and exactly explain this analogy of grabbing liquidity here and what does that mean on the actual charts, right? So we're going to get into that and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So let's do it. So I used the rubber band in that reel to basically explain before taking a trade, we need price to grab liquidity and then for that to give us the spring basically uh, to get more, you know, to get a good move out of our trade, right? To get uh, basically the juice. So what is liquidity? That is what I obviously didn't explain in that as we don't have enough time in reels. It's basically liquidity is orders. It's nothing too complicated. Now you will find tons of videos on the internet about liquidity here, and it will be extremely complicated. There's liquidity grabs, there's liquidity zones, sweeps, uh, stopping out retail stop loss and all of that. But I really want to clear this up and tell you exactly how I apply liquidity because there's so many different ways. But when you understand what the true uh, meaning of liquidity is, it's actually quite straightforward. And liquidity is just orders. Price cannot move through the charts without some form of supply and demand because at zones where we want price to go down, it will go down. Zones where price is attractive to buy, investors will buy it up. And that's how prices make those trends. That's how buy, uh, prices go up and down. And liquidity, right? Liquidity is orders. For every buy, there's a sell. For every sell, there's a buy. And there basically needs to be orders in the chart, right? So where are those orders going to happen? Well, there's going to be liquidity areas, right? Now, obviously, a clear example right here in front of you is this zone right here. How do I know that this has a lot of liquidity? Because look what the chart is telling you. Always read the charts, right? Tell the story of what's happening on the charts, not the story of what's happening off the charts. It's a common thing I always tell people. A lot of people say, oh, we need to go and stop loss hunt all of the retail traders. No, that's a story off the charts. Focus on the charts. You're not trading retail traders, you're trading the charts. So right up here, you can see Tons of retail stop losses could have been below here, but hey, guess what? They didn't get stopped out. If you just bought in these zones, you would be fine one, two, three, a lot of times. But this is grabbing liquidity from internal zones, yes, but this is where you start to get lost in the source. So focus on the story here. How do I know there's a lot of liquidity here? The reason I know there's a lot of liquidity is look at the reactions that's having from here. Now, after every single deep dive we make, right? we are seeing an opposite reaction and that's the act of grabbing liquidity. So this is gonna become useful later on in the video where I tell you exactly how I use liquidity to enter. So there's two types of liquidity. There's liquidity grabs and liquidity in terms of structure. So many people know liquidity as this type of stuff where we grab liquidity. Normally it looks something like where we have a range, a candle will then sweep down like this leaving a wick and closing bullish and that wick is a liquidity grab. Basically like the rubber band, going down, grabbing to give you that spring back up, right? That's that liquidity grab. But what people don't understand is in a trending move, structure also acts as liquidity because what happened to make structure? We had uh, sellers come into the market in terms of bullish structure here, and then suddenly we get buyers come into the market. Now that's liquidity because those sellers then allowed discount in price for buyers to buy as well, which also creates liquidity, which creates a structure that price is now at an attractive zone. And we can use that to play as traders to realize that, hey, price is pulled back. We have structure. I know that in order for price to continue up, it needs to respect structure on candle closures, right? So candle closures are very, very important. So these are the two types of liquidity. You have structural liquidity and liquidity grabs, okay? So the key here, and this is where I'm going to get into the strategy part of the video is I want there to be one of the liquidity before entering a trade. So that means I either need there to be a liquidity grab if there is that's a positive or I need that to or I need structure to be formed, right? So those are the two things I need. So if we go ahead and look at one of my entries, we'll take one of my most common entries here. You can see setup one is an often reoccurrence here in my trading here. This is our live stream journal here. All the trades I've taken live setup one, you could see happens a lot, but let's bring setup one back. This entitles what? This entitles price 
to create structure and close above very very important if you don't wait for closures this is where you can become the liquidity because price can be nasty and what can price do price could simply come up into the range here leave a wick and close back inside the range and you would have bought FOMO buy into the highs and lose so I always wait for candle closures the time frame I use says it here one hour 30 15 minute if you want to learn about my entries do check out my entry strategy videos uh, that will help you to learn about the entries but the liquidity in this scenario here was created by what was created by structure so if I copy this image here and we can paste this onto trading view for us here so if I paste this onto here so we can do a little bit of drawing on this Right, and we look at this setup here. Now, obviously, you need all the confluences of the setup, but in this scenario here, our liquidity is the structural creation here because this we had a lot of buy orders coming to here. We needed this. This is creating liquidity. When we range like this, we are accumulating buys and sells, and the resolution of that is going to be this candle closing above, and the volume that was created in the range because range creates volume and liquidity is going to give us a spike up. So what we would like to see even further, which is going to give us even more confirmation, is if we see a little liquidity grab down. A lot of people are going to get involved in sales when you have all of your confluences together. Remember, liquidity is only a part of trading. But when you have all of your confluences together, such as higher time frame trend, you have your daily bias, your session bias, as well as your zones to trade in, which is all explained on my channel you will be able to understand that this added confluence is just going to make you more confident. So like we said, liquidity grab, we don't get involved in sales because our plan was to look for buys. So this just becomes a confluence, giving you even more confidence to take the candle close above here because that liquidity grab was made. OK, and how do you avoid being part of the liquidity grabs? You look for what you look for closures. And of course, you trade with bias and you have your plan, right? So this is how you're going to avoid being the liquidity is by waiting for candle closures and also not trading the stupid lower time frame. So this is very, very important. And this is what's going to give confirmation. So when I look to take a trade, I always need structure around my trade, either before or after I need structure to be formed. And I also like to have liquidity grab. So let's go ahead and look at some examples on the chart here and and then explain a little bit more about this so yesterday I actually had a very nice example here on the charts that i want to show you guys so yesterday we started pushing up very high here we have an area that we could look to fill to go and tap into this resistance here problem with this is we've just been pushing up very very heavy here we need structure or liquidity grabs to continue right you can see how this candle gave a liquidity grab to give this move so that's an added confirmation a perfect example of where you take the trade you'd let this candle make its bottom wick as it breaks through the high that's basically the same setup we just looked at right close above check this out close above here boom liquidity grab extra confirmation giving you the juice to give you these big moves you want the big moves let there be liquidity grabs right so now what do we need to wait for well we need to wait for structure or liquidity grabs to get into the move so look what happens here we end up creating structure price creates a resistance too many people are trying to buy the highs here fomoing to go and get the trade back up to these highs so instead you wait for structure you know that bias has been bullish trend has been bullish going into here you can see multiple times need structure liquidity grab closes above you get the continuation right need structure continuation structure continuation always till the next highs right so you can see how markets ebb and flow like that not only that we get one more liquidity grab now this grab from the lows remember what i said if it's not closing below the lows this is where a lot of people like let's watch that bar again right you can see look at this boom everyone's selling say, ah price is gonna dump nope not today because we didn't close below these lows we respected it now, if we can create a support, this is going to be another one of my setups. So this is going to be this setup here where we get a pullback and support creation here. You can see that. And look at this. Boom. We get this candle closing. Boom. Bullish like that. Now you can look for price to continue towards the upside. Liquidity is definitely grabbed here. 100%. Stop loss ideally should go below the wick. You could play it below here knowing some lower time frame stuff. Uh, but boom, then it should give you your trade at least back up to the highs. First target, second target going to be that whole zone up there. Eventually, if price is able yeah, to reach there. So this is how you're going to utilize that and how I utilize that. I mean, the gems I'm giving you here. So what so you will hear on the Internet, all of these terms, target liquidity, target highs, target sweeping of lows and stuff like that. Personally, I don't use that in my own trading. I know that's a different method. Liquidity can be used in many different ways. It's the, the name liquidity. It means to be liquid. So it means something ebbs and flows. It's not something that stays 
uh, the same here. So people are going to use it different. I know not everyone's going to agree with the way I use it, but it's a very simplistic method because remember, we trade for what reasons? We have a strategy to remove the randomness from the market. We want to not be involved in randomness at the market. So not taking a trade, not taking a setup is avoiding us from randomness in the market because we're staying true to our plan. So in our plan, we need to have things that are clear and simple instead of complex and you're trying to solve for X every single time. Right. And this is what I find with advanced strategies or people who try to overcomplicate trading is that you always trying to solve for X, trying to not tell the story on the charts, but tell the story of the market. You will never discover the story of the market. There are two advanced algorithms. Everything is too complex for you to try and digest that. By the time you understand it, you probably are just going to be in analysis paralysis. So it's exactly the situation we want to avoid. This is the way I personally use. Uh, liquidity hope this clears it up and is something useful for you if it is definitely leave a subscribe leave a like on the channel i would appreciate that and with that being said take care trade shop and hopefully catch you guys very very soon peace <laughs>